Come on, when man builds something, how many of you know there's always a little bit of slime involved? It might look good on the outside, but on the inside, the intents of the heart, the why behind the what, what this is doing, what this is focusing on. The Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful, it's wicked. Man wants to preserve his name. He wants to preserve himself. That's what we all want to do before Jesus comes and begins to dwell on the inside of us. So Nimrod, these bricks and this slime, and he begins to construct this man-made thing. Look what he says. He says, look, let's do this. Here's why he wants to do it. Let's build ourselves a city, a tower whose top is, is in the heavens. That's why it was called Babel originally, gateway to God. Let's build a bridge to God. Let's build a gateway to God, and here's why. So we can make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. In other words, why is Nimrod doing it? God just told Noah and his sons the exact opposite of what Nimrod is doing. He just told Noah and his sons, I want you to be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. I want you to get out there. I want you to repopulate. I want you to replenish the earth. I want you to take my name into the four corners of the earth. I don't want everybody coming together. I want you to get out there and I want you to scatter. What does man-made religion end up doing? It ends up doing the very opposite of the purposes of God. Here's what Nimrod's saying is, look, we've got to protect ourselves. Everybody listen, we need to protect our culture. We need to protect our way of life. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going we're to add God to this thing. We're going to make our own religion. We're going to protect our way of life. We know that when man gets prideful, his heart begins to be lifted up. The Bible says that Nimrod was a mighty hunter in the earth. His heart was lifted up. He says, this is going to be the bridge to God. This is going to be the religion. We're going to gather everybody here together. We're going to make a name for ourselves. We're going to protect ourselves, and we're going to protect our culture. And in order to do that, we need God involved. And we need God to bless what we're doing, and we need a God so that people will fear that higher power. So that's what we're going to hear to do, do at this place called Babel, the gateway to God. You know, I, uh, uh, my major, when I was in college, many of you know my story, I got saved in college. Uh, I went to LSU, and um, don't hold that against me, all you Gator fans. And, you know, we kind of have an unholy alliance right now against Alabama somewhat, right? So it's, it's Bama fans' time to shine for the the moment, but I went to LSU. I got saved in the middle of my college experience, and uh, you know I was in the whole bar drug scene and all that kind of stuff. But uh, after I got saved, I really had a lot of questions when I, you know, sincerely surrendered to God and all that, and I was fired up for God. But I had a whole lot of questions about God and about other religions. And so my major at LSU, a very secular and a very liberal university, my major was religious studies. And so I studied all of the religions of the world when I was in college. Almost all of the classes that I took, except for a few, were anti-Christianity, anti-Jesus. Let me tell you something. You go to a secular university and major in religious studies, that's a real Bible school. That's a real training ground. Because if you don't know your stuff, you will get torn to pieces. And it is amazing to see what they'll teach in those classes, and no one will challenge them. I was in one class. I had one religious class. The professor, there were 300, over 300 students in this class. It was in an auditorium. The professor there taught one day that at Sodom, it was God who sent heavenly angels to Lot's house who wanted to have sex with Lot's daughters and were practicing homosexuality with all the men of Sodom. God sent heavenly angels from heaven. He taught the class that that's what the Bible said. 
that the Bible says that God sent heavenly angels from heaven to Sodom to have sex with men and to rape Lot's daughters. Not one person said one thing over 300 students. Well, except me. Man, I, st I, st I didn't even raise my hand for that one. I stood up, I said, what? You know, and I started telling them, and then I had my Bible, and this is what it says, and how can you do that? You know, blah, 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 blah. They all shouted me down. You know, I was the religious zealot. And I went to him after class, and I said, you have an ethical responsibility. Forget what you think about me or anything else. You have an ethical responsibility to correct yourself. And he got up the next day, and he apologized to the class for teaching that stuff. But I'm telling you, listen, that happens all the time in our universities. People twist the word of God. But here's what I'm trying to say. If you have an open mind and you study religion, I studied all the religions of the world, the six major religions of the world. There's hundreds of what you would call side or smaller religions of the world. If you get into cultic practices and stuff like that, it's even in the millions. But what I'm saying is, when you study all those things, here's what you see. In every single one of those things, even in a form of Christianity, you see all of the, the, the outwardness, you all see all of the traditions, you see all of the, uh, the, the, the religion, you see the regulations. But if there's only one place where you find a relationship, and there's only one place where you find real truth, and that is in the person of Jesus Christ. And that is why, that is why some of the greatest Christians at first, like C.F. Lewis and Josh McDowell, they were first atheists, but they went in with an open mind and open heart and studied the religions of the world. And I'm telling you, if you study the religions of the world, it is obvious. It is, it is, Jesus is so far above and beyond and different from anything, from all those other bricks and slime out there. Listen, I'm asking you to lose your religion so you can gain Christ. And Christians too. I mean, we're going to talk a lot about that next week. We're going to talk about the religion of Christianity and how it repels people. Jesus came so that we could have a relationship with God. It's that simple. We're not a religion. He didn't come to, 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 to establish a religion. He didn't come to establish a government or a political movement of this world. He came to establish a love relationship with you and I. And every time we practice man-made religion, whether it's an outward form of Christianity or it's one of the other religions of the world, it's going to end up being bricks and slime and the fruit of it is going to be just like what happened at Babel. It's going to end up being confusion. It's going to end up being division. And in the end, it will end up failing and not delivering on what was promised. You know, I can remember looking around when I was in college and, and studying the religions of the world. I can remember thinking like, well, man, all these people practice this certain religion. I mean, how can all those people be wrong? And there's all these people practicing this religion. How could all those people be wrong? Listen, don't think in terms of that. All you need to do is go and look at who founded the religion. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you're talking about followers of Jesus... We, we look to our founder, Jesus. If you want to talk about, you know, those who practice Buddhism, forget if it's however many millions of people. It doesn't matter how many people believe that or practice that. It all comes down to Buddha. That's right, that's right. It all comes down to Jesus. It all comes down to Muhammad. It all comes down to Confucius. It all comes down to who is the leader or the founder. And I'm telling you, if the foundation is faulty, the house will come down. So it's not about, it's not about all these people being wrong. It's not about that. It's about who are you following? 